Hi, welcome back to episode two of Toast TV. I'm really excited to introduce our second co-toast, Natasha McGurban. Hello. <laughs> Natasha is the director of creative projects for Make It Nice Hospitality. And we are out here in beautiful Aspen for this week's episode of Toast TV. Uh, we'll get into why we're here in Aspen in a second. We wish you could be here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Every, we wish everybody could be in Aspen with us. It's a truly magical place. We had gotten to talking a little bit ago about some of our favorite sort of like cozy, cold weather snacks, uh, which brings us here today. Um, my favorite cozy winter snack is buttered toast with hot chocolate, something my mom used to make for me and my sisters growing up. And Natasha's here to tell us about her favorite sort of childhood winter snack. Yeah, and it was actually, it was kind of a snack and or breakfast that we would have um, on the regular, um, not necessarily specific to the holidays, but now I find because I live away from home and only get to come home usually for the holidays, it's something that has become a tradition to have this whenever I go home for Christmas. Um, it's quite basic. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was something that my mom had always uh, kind of, well, she, I thought she invented it, but then we found out recently that it was not invented by her. Um, it goes back to her camp traditions um, of the YMCA back in Seattle, way back in the 60s and 70s. Um, but yeah, should I go into go, it? Go, where is it? So um, I will preface by saying I grew up in a family of five, um, and so my mom, most of the grocery shopping was done at Costco. So it would be kind of grocery store loaves of bread, um, nothing too fancy. Um, it was always healthy. She'd always get the whole grain option, obviously, but with five kids, you kind of do what you can and um, you buy nice. in bulk. Yeah. Um, so this toast, um, well, it's actually more about the spread than the toast itself because the toast is more of a vessel, I think, in this um, certain situation. Mm -hmm. um, but the spread is what she called, um, and as I found out, um, is not necessarily copy copyrighted by the YMCA, but pretty mm -hmm. close. It goes way back in their archive, um, but it's something called goop. Um, and this is a goop that came far before Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, goop. So Do you think maybe she went to the same summer camp that your mom did? It's possible. <laughs> I definitely think that that could, um, that could have was. been yeah, the, the deciding factor for her company name. Um, goop is quite simple. It's essentially, um, and as Stacy pointed out to me earlier, compound butter. So something that you might be familiar with or have seen um, in many different situations, maybe with other mix-ins. But um, it all starts with butter as the base. This is just a softened room temperature butter. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a rush, you can throw it in the microwave and melt it. It still works just fine. Um, so it's butter. It is brown sugar, like a light brown sugar, and powdered cinnamon. So it's kind of like a cinnamon sugar butter um, on your toast um, called goop. And essentially it just melts over the surface of the toast and just kind of gives the toast like a nice little nuance of cinnamon and sugar, which I think is, um, those flavors are particularly popular around the holidays, so it works for that too. Um, Amazing. So shall we go ahead and make yeah, it? go ahead and make it. So the second part of the, to it wasn't just the cinnamon, I'm sorry, the goop toast. Yes. It also had, well, we ate it with well, tea. tea. Yeah, so growing up, um, my grandmother is actually from England. She um, immigrated over here, went over to Canada, all the way across the US, over to oops, <laughs> British Columbia, and then down into Seattle from there. And so she would always drink black tea. That was just a thing that they would we would always have um, in the morning for breakfast. My grandmother usually had like, what was it? It's like red rose or something. Okay. And it's just like a black tea bag, very straightforward, nothing fancy, no loose leaf. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, red rose, I remember in particular, you'd get the box of tea and it would come with like a little collectible, like marble, like 
sculptural thing. Oh, really? Like a monkey, circus animals, or and we would collect them all. So every time we went over to my grandma's house um, and drank tea, we would see like what red rose kind of uh, collectible she had for us. Um, I love that. I wonder if there's like a market for like red rose collectibles it today. Be. I haven't even looked into it. Yeah. But, um, I'll have to check out eBay or something. Yeah, it's so funny how something as simple as toast and spread can stir up all of these wonderful memories. I know. That's <laughs> one of my favorite things about shows. We all kind of, without thinking of it, I think there's probably a memory of at some point in someone's like childhood of having like you know, cinnamon toast or like butter toast with hot chocolate or how does it smell? Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> it smells just like, I mean, it's almost That's amazing. like, it's almost like that phase when you're making cookie dough and it's just like the creamed butter with the sugar. Mm -hmm. Just add a little cinnamon to that and that scoop yeah. in a nutshell. In a nutshell. That's amazing. Add more cinnamon. So, um, speaking of the tea, I know that the tea packet was what you grew up with. We yes. are gonna get a little fancier today, if that's Which okay. Is great. We're gonna do a little high-low action. Uh, we do have loose leaf tea. It is a black tea, uh, it's a Himalayan black tea. I uh, hope that's okay, it's kind of similar like the Ceylon. Um, and this is from In Pursuit of Tea, um, a really great artisan tea um, purveyor, I would say. Sebastian travels the world finding like, the best teas. And this is one of my personal favorites, um, as you can kind of see, hopefully. So we're gonna put it right here in our sort of tea strainer, whichever one. We're gonna fill it up. You heard earlier the kettle sort of sounding the alarm at the beginning. What you wanna do is bring the water to a boil and let it set for a couple minutes because you don't wanna put boiling water right onto the tea. So the goop is shaping up. Um, it looks beautiful. You see it now. It's definitely turned color. Mm -hmm. um, if you get in kind of closer, you see there's like a lot of texture to it. It's mm -hmm. pretty gritty um, and a good Amazing. amount of cinnamon as well. Um, I didn't think about it until you said gritty, but you're right. Like that, like texture specifically, like is what like cinnamon toast or goo is like all about. Yeah. Um, I I'm told that. So this recipe, again, originated with Camp Coleman, um, which is a YMCA camp um, just located outside of Seattle. Mm -hmm. And um, they would have these French toast and goop breakfasts at the camp oh my God. Uh, as like one of the meals that you would have if you were going to camp there. Um, and the goop and French toast breakfast became so popular that I think even to this day they have every now and then a goop and French toast breakfast in Seattle where That's alumni awesome. of the camp can come and have their nostalgic of camp memory breakfast. Amazing. So that's that. Cool. We're ready to I think spread so. it? To spread it. Amazing. Awesome. All right. So here it is. It's beautiful. Should we show it? Yeah, let's show it. Yeah. Perfect. So there it is. It's beautiful. Toast and goop. Toast and goop. Well, we're going to uh, finish putting together the tea, and then we're going to sit down and eat some goop. Delicious. Yay. As in all of our episodes of Toast TV, I'd like to invite a guest who is celebrating something recently, and we are celebrating um, Natasha being in a really amazing Netflix movie, right, or show, yeah. I guess, called Seven Days Out. Seven Days Out is out. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. So um, going back to what we're celebrating, because I watched it and it's amazing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Seven Days Out and what it is and kind of what that process looked like? Yeah, so Seven Days Out is a documentary on Netflix. Um, it's a series of documentaries, in fact, that um, focuses on different industries um, and events, like major events for those industries um, and the process of getting those events off the ground, mm -hmm. um, specifically just seven days before those events. And for us, they focused on 11 Madison Park uh, last year as we renovated the restaurant. Uh, we closed for three months uh, as an opportunity to finally make some changes to the space um, because we were able to sign a lease for another 20 years. Um, so it was a great opportunity to kind of refresh, make sure everything was updated and ready and perfect mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. Um, the interesting thing about it was that the renovation and closure, closure came right after we were named number one in the world. 
Um, in most cases, if you're named number one, you don't change anything. You just keep <laughs> on doing what you're doing. But right. um, as we do, we like to change a lot. So uh, it was very stressful. There was a lot of pressure because you're reopening the number one restaurant in the world and working with people like Will and Chef who um, are very particular and want things done a certain way. Um, so my role in the process was essentially a project manager. Um, I was involved with the early design meetings all the way up until the opening and making sure things were kind of running smoothly, acting as a liaison between what Daniel and Will wanted and what the contractors were saying and what the kitchen needed. Um, I was just kind of like the go between for everyone. So That's awesome. it was cool to have it all documented mm -hmm. and um, interesting looking back on it now. I think I get a little bit of PTSD watching it. <laughs> it just stirs up those um, stressful moments again. Like the opposite of the memories of the toast and yes. the tea. Yeah. Are... It is not Netflix and chill. It's Netflix <laughs> and freak the fuck out. Oh, I'm not allowed to curse on this. It's okay. We are now. <laughs> The reason why we are in Aspen is because another one of the projects or one of the other restaurants, I would say, in uh, the portfolio for Make It Nice Hospitality is the EMP, I love Madison Park, Winter House. And I think it's kind of cool how it ties into the Netflix special because while the restaurant was being renovated, the whole team, in order to kind of keep everybody as a part of the family, um, moved out to East Hampton for the summer to open up a summer pop-up. And then that kind of evolved, did it a second time, and had so much fun, it was so successful, that the company decided to open up a winter pop-up out here in Aspen. Can you tell us a little bit about that and your role kind of in both of those? Or Yeah, so you know? um, it's, it's been like an incredible experience. Um, it was an incredible experience working on the EMP renovation. But with those projects, it's always interesting because we have architects and we have experts and we have people who, you know, we help guide in the process and make sure that they understand what we want. But ultimately, it's um, it's not so much full on do it yourself, whereas the summer house and winter house projects are that, mm -hmm. which um, presents its own challenges. It becomes, um, I think very nerve-wracking that you're responsible for actually physically putting the space together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also really exciting because it gives you a chance to actually have some creative input and um, you know you get to take the reins a little bit. That's awesome. Yeah. I, um, so in, at, on Toast TV, we like to inspire, we like to educate and inform, and I think ever, anyone who meets Natasha is just immediately inspired by your ability and everything and I think what was so special about the houses and Winter House specifically is just as you said we're in other projects other restaurants you have architecture builders coming in and they're basically doing all of the work uh, the, the actual physical work to open up a restaurant but with these um, pop-ups being that they're pop-ups they're like it's kind of like DIY get your hands dirty do it yeah. yourself um, so it's been really awesome to see you know you do that and I'm sure we've talked about this before like learning how to do certain things um, you don't like kind of walk into these situations just with this like institutional knowledge of how to like wallpaper a property or something else that Natasha did with the warehouse with like upholstering a couch can you kind of like tell our viewers kind of like what your process is with those things well I think it's funny um, especially tying into actually back to the toast and the tea these are things that uh, my mom always kind of had for us growing up or it was her traditions passed on to us and I think similarly she was a very she was an avid gardener she was an avid like do-it-yourselfer mm -hmm. um, we weren't allowed to watch too much tv but when we the tv was on it was often on HGTV or TLC right. um, back when like the shows were like those kinds of do-it-yourself um, shows and so I think just being surrounded by that growing up and working on projects with her and learning how to sew um, It was a lot of like if you see something Out there in the world you can probably figure out how to make it or do it yourself um, Especially as it relates to upholstery or so many other projects lately. I find that taking something apart um, helps you to understand how it's built and how it's made and then you can put it back together that can be with upholstery specifically so I actually took apart the old upholstery and used 
the fabric essentially as a template for the new fabric and then just kind of worked around that and once you understand where everything connects and how it's put together you can just put it back together yourself the same thing is with sewing um mm. emily parkinson she works with us she's one of our dream weavers and she um she sews she's an avid sewer and i sat down with her over the summer to kind of put these clothing together um these pieces from this fabric that was a part of our cushions and she was just showing me how you can essentially take apart a piece of clothing that you love and like work off of that as a template uh, i'd love actually to hear more about another project that you did that you worked on that was part of a different restaurant group um well i was really lucky to um kind of get involved with this project. It was a restaurant called Bombay Bread Bar mm -hmm. um, that down in Soho in New York City. Floyd Cardoz is the chef. And um, he is a good friend of Will and Daniel, our owners. He used to kind of work in the same restaurant family as them. So he's always been considered a part of the family. And so we decided to kind of take his restaurant and give it a fresh new take, some new life. Um, and it was really exciting because we got involved with this woman, Chris Moran, who is, um, she works with Wes Anderson on his sets and designs um, things for him. She does Bill Murray's annual Christmas party. She, That's so um, cool. And so anything from events to actual, you know, physical props. Um, she's just an incredible, incredible person. So they brought her on the project to kind of act as like the designer um, or the kind of creative vision. And how did that happen? That story is actually really interesting too. I believe Will and Christina just reached out to just her. Just like cold called cold her, Cold right? called her. Um, they found out about her. I want to say that there was an article in some publication that came out, a photo of her in her home and just talked about what she did and how she was kind of the woman behind Wes. Mm -hmm. And they reached out to her and she responded and... Um, it was so awesome kind of getting to see, especially uh, having been through those experiences and having to like figure things out, seeing how someone else's process works. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really, it was, uh, it was awesome. That's so it. cool. When I heard that, it's like such an inspiring thing. She's like, okay, I found this person who creates these things that I really like and I think would fit with what I'm working on. Just gonna call her. Yeah. See what she's. See if she's got anything going yeah, on. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, why not? Like, I I think that that mm. attitude is really important because if you think that someone isn't gonna, I don't know. There's no harm in asking. That's, yeah, it's the worst they can say. Exactly. So. What was something that you took away from that? Or you learned from the process, or Chris, or just anything? I think it was. Um, I remember her always talking about things being more utilitarian and that really struck with me. I don't okay. know. As far as nothing, I think your approach to something, especially when designing an event or a room, sometimes for me I can get very specific. It has to, not always has to match, but I think it just has to be like a certain way and her approach in many ways was kind of off kilter a little bit where mm -hmm. everything like it didn't have to always like mesh so perfectly and if something was just like a utilitarian piece that was just like purely functional but had this interesting look to it that could be you know a focal point in the room um, in a way that I didn't expect it to and sometimes um, more is better I mean especially more is more. <laughs> when designing uh, when designing a restaurant that was supposed to be reminiscent of um, India and kind of like the trains that went through and it was very bright and colorful um, Sometimes using all of that color and all of those patterns is very jarring mm -hmm. And I was a little bit nervous going into it because we were working with a mural and using this like woman who does like Indian like pop art and like all of these patterns and prints and like right and then a bunch of old pieces too I was like how is this all gonna work together? Right. Especially um, with the Love Mass and Park being so clean yes. and like restrained, I would exactly. say, and a lot of the details go in to like opposite, just kind of like more and yes. bright and bold. We had a lavender wall <laughs> with like this like half curtain of like this tassel that was like this mustard color. So it was, there was a lot going on, but it was interesting seeing her vision and her mood boards and her uh, process throughout the whole experience and then the end result and seeing how it all came together so beautifully. So I learned a lot from that. That's um, awesome. Which is great, yeah. That's amazing. 
Well, Natasha, I want to thank you so much for your time. Yes. This is amazing. I, like, had to, like, keep myself from just, like, kind <laughs> of blacking out and just eating and drinking this whole thing while we've been sitting here. But once we turn the cameras off, I'm definitely going to devour this toast. And it's been so amazing to learn kind of what your process has been and some, you know, tricks of the trade mm -hmm. and whatnot. And um, there you have it. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's been an honor. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm.